Good morning, friends. Good morning. Am I on? Good morning, friends. You hear me? Yeah. And a warm welcome to Kings Park Church as we gather get together here to worship God. It's good to see everyone here this morning, especially braving the, the weather conditions. And good morning to all those who are joining us online. Can I say this might be a good time if you have a hymn book in the house to go and grab it, and that would allow you to join in the um, hymns when we sing them. I can also just remind everybody that during the month of October, we're continuing to collect for Lodging House Mission. Am I being heard? No. no. I'll just give Raymond a minute. No point in speaking and nobody hears me. Oh. Is that me now? Okay. I did say good morning to everyone. Um, it's good to see you here. And uh, just a reminder that we are continuing to collect for a lodging house mission, either through financial donations or through produce. The lists of what our what lodging house mission are looking for can be at, are at the door. And there's also a box at the side door. If you can come down through the week when the church is open and just leave um, tins and whatever else they're asking for, cereal in the box there. And at some point we will be taking the, uh, what's been donated over to the Lodging House Mission. So please remember that continues throughout the whole month of October. And now can I welcome to our lectern this morning, Alison Fenton, who is session clerk at Giffnick South Church and is also an accredited worship leader with the press in Glasgow. I've got that right. Yeah. Got credited. Right. <laughs> credited. Um, so welcome, Alison, and we look forward to hearing what you have to say to us this morning. Thank you, John. Gosh, I sound very loud. <laughs> <laughs> That'll wake you all up, won't it? So, yes, thank you for your warm welcome. It's lovely to be here and to have the opportunity to lead worship. I'm not quite sure when I trained to be a worship leader that I quite anticipated being asked to go around different congregations. It was really more to, uh, well, I already did lead worship at our own congregation in Giffnick South. But I bring you warm greetings from Giffnick South, um, and it is lovely to come and share worship with other congregations. So, our call to worship this morning, if we still ourselves before God... Almighty God, creator and ruler of all, we come this day to worship you and to ask your guidance upon our lives. We come to be still, we come to listen, and we come to offer ourselves to you. Prepare our hearts to receive your word and uplift our spirits as we spend time together worshipping you, so that when we leave this place of worship, we may feel renewed and refreshed. Amen. We begin our worship this morning with that wonderful hymn, hymn 132, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise. I'm sure we can still try and sing well with our face masks on. I know it's not quite the same. And I'll make sure I step back because I'm not a good singer. So you don't want to hear me.
come before God in prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for your constant guidance in our lives and for all the ways you encourage, challenge, strengthen and renew us. We thank you that we still hear your quiet words whispering to us in the silence of our own hearts. We thank you that through song, prayer, preaching, worship, mission and service, we are still able to hear your voice. Through fellowship and community, we can feel your presence in what we do and say. We thank you that when we see the fields of corn and hear the birds singing, we are hearing you. And when the wind blows, we feel you. We thank you that through Christ's life, work, teaching, death and resurrection, you speak to us. And that your Holy Spirit inspires, comforts and empowers us each day. We thank you for the times we have felt lost and have felt your hand take hold of us and lead us forward through difficulties, life problems and illnesses. We thank you for your healing touch. Forgiving God, we have asked, you have asked us to bear fruit in our lives and to share our faith with others. Yet so many times we have failed you in doing this. We have let you down and let ourselves down. Our thoughts and words have failed you. We have missed opportunities to speak up for our belief in you, choosing to remain silent instead of witnessing for you. We are ashamed of our weaknesses, faults, greed, selfishness, envy and pride. Our faith has been shallow and we have failed you in so many ways. In your forgiving mercy and grace, cleanse our hearts and minds that we may better serve you and so that we can feel strengthened to follow you more faithfully each day. Be with us now directing our ways so that we may glorify you in all that we do and say. And we further pray in the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever amen well boys and girls i was a bit worried there weren't going to be any boys and girls this morning and i said what happens then I was told that never happens here, so that's, that's very good. It has happened in our church before. And I'm stuck here and I can't move, I can't come down and talk to you. I told you that, didn't I? So I'm going to test myself, because I went in to meet them all earlier, and I asked them all their names. So this is a big challenge here for me. So we've got John Paul, Lexi, Wallace, Lachlan. Did I get that right? actually does deserve a gold star. Uh, and I'm Alison. So, I'm going to tell you a story. The, boy, the big people are going to hear this read later. But one day Jesus was walking round a lake and he saw two men fishing. One of them was Simon and the other was his brother, Andrew. Jesus stopped to talk to them for a little bit. And when he was getting ready to leave, Jesus looked at Simon and Andrew and said, follow me. So what do you think they did? What do you think? Did they follow? Yeah. They did. Yes, they did. Simon and Andrew put down their fishing nets and they followed Jesus and they were the very first disciples. Then they all walked a little bit further along the lake and they saw two more fishermen and they were called James and John. See, I've been quite good with names this morning. And Jesus stopped and talked to them for a while and he asked them to follow. So what do you think James and John did? Did they follow? They did. They got out their boats and they followed him. And I've always wondered why those fishermen left their nets and boats and just got up and followed Jesus like that. I've had people ask me to follow them and sometimes it's been a bit hard to decide if I wanted to 
or not. Have you ever had that? Somebody told you to come and follow them and you're not sure what to do? Mm -hmm. No? Not the same. Sometimes some adults have not been too sure actually whether it's the, what they want to do and whether they want to follow other people. So, you've got two sheets of paper. I gave you two sheets of paper, didn't you? So I've got a few questions for you. So I'm going to be somebody, pretend to be somebody, who wants you to follow them. And I'm going to say something and then you've got to decide if you think it's someone you really want to follow or if you think that you would not follow them. So you've got one sign that says follow and you've got another which is in green and another one that says don't follow which is in red. So here's the first one. So I saw a lady drop some money. I think it was maybe a five pound note and I got it before anyone else saw it. Let's go to the shop and buy some sweets. Are you going to follow me and do that or are you not going to follow? Oh, this is maybe quite tempting. I might get the wrong answer here. Oh, right. Oh, well, we're going to do don't follow. What do you think? Don't follow? Yeah? Why do you think that would be? Because it's someone else's money? Yeah, and that might be really... They might not have any much money. And they might really need that money. So, it wasn't your money to go and spend on sweets. Although you might have been very tempted. Buy a lot of sweets with five pounds. Okay, here's the next one. So I found somebody's keys just lying as I came in here. Let's go and give them to, who would we give them to? Session Clark, I think, John Black, so they can find out who they are and get them back to them. Do you think you're going to follow and do that or not? Follow? Green, follow? <laughs> yeah? Yeah? Not sure? Not sure. Not sure whether you want to return the keys. Not sure what you're going to do with the keys, but okay, yeah. So you would want to give them, give them to somebody who's going to find out whose these keys are, because they might go out and not be able to drive their car, or they might not be able to get into their house, and actually it's not a very nice day, so they would be standing outside getting all wet, wouldn't they? That wouldn't be very nice. Right, here's another one. I don't know, are you all at school? Not, not often, no. Okay, well, for the older ones, so here's another one. I need your help. I didn't do my homework last night, but I've told the teacher that I did it. But I've told her that I lost it on the way to school. So I need you to tell the teacher that you saw it before I lost it. What do you think? You going to say follow or not follow? Don't follow. Yeah. Why would that be? Would be that? Yeah. Yeah, I might. And I'm asking you to tell a lie, aren't I? And lies aren't very good. So, you wouldn't do that, would you? You wouldn't be very smart. You might get found out as well. You wouldn't like that. Then you'd be found that you'd told a lie. So, how did you decide if you wanted to follow these people or not? Well, I think I know how the fishermen made their decision to follow Jesus because the story says that when Jesus spoke to them, he told them good news instead of bad news. He told them about the things that were good for everyone, no matter who they were. So remember the person that wanted to keep the money? Was that good news or bad news? Bad news. It would have been very bad news for that lady. What about if I wanted you to tell a lie to the teacher? Is that good, bad news? What about picking up the keys and giving them to Mr Black? Good news. Yeah. So the four fishermen decided to follow Jesus because he talked to them about some really good news. And it was good news for everyone. And that's a good way for us to decide if we're going to follow someone or not. If they're wanting to give us good news or bad news. And we follow Jesus because he tells us really good news. That God loves us very much and wants us to love and take care of each other. Can you remember that? Jesus, to follow Jesus and to be more like him. We're going to sing a song that I was told, I think you know quite well, I will make you fishers of men. And we've got two verses, I think. Have we got the two verses? Yes, uh, about reading your Bible. Because uh, Jesus called them from fishing to be fishers of men by following him.
Good morning, friends. Our readings this morning start with um, the first eight verses of Psalm number 119. Happy are those whose lives are faultless, who live according to the law of God. Happy are those who follow his commands, who obey him with all their heart. They never do wrong. They walk in the Lord's ways. Lord, you have given us your laws and told us to obey them faithfully. How I hope that I shall be faithful in keeping your instructions. If I pay attention to all your commands, then I will not be put to shame. As I learn your righteous judgments, I will praise you with a pure heart. I will obey your laws, never abandon me. And turning to the New Testament, friends, uh, the first chapter of Mark, reading from verses 16 to 20. As Jesus walked along the shore of the Lake of Galilee, he saw two fishermen, Simon and his brother Andrew, catching fish with a net. Jesus said to them, come with me and I will teach you to catch men. At once they left their nets and went with him. He went a little farther on and saw two brothers James and John, the sons of Zebedee. They were in their boat getting their nets ready. As soon as Jesus saw them, he called them. Then they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and went with Jesus. Amen. And thanks be to God. We're going to continue our worship now with a hymn that I believe you haven't maybe sung for a wee while uh, here in this congregation. It's hymn 565, My Life Flows On in Endless Song. It's one of my favourites, so that's one of the perks of leading worship. Uh, but uh, Jonathan's going to play it through once uh, before we, we sing. <laughs>
was good singing, even if you hadn't sung it for a while. I'm sure you all have received invitations at some time to weddings, birthday parties, dinners. Maybe if you're even lucky, you've been invited to a royal garden party. Or maybe you've been invited to take up a new job or start a new project. And with all these invitations, I'm sure you'll think about them, plan for them, and decide if you're going to go or not. But what if accepting one of these invitations meant leaving familiar surroundings and the comfort of home with no time for planning, no time to really think it through? Would you still do it? This was the question placed before Simon and Andrew, James and John. Jesus invited all four to come, follow me. It's interesting to notice what Jesus doesn't seem to tell them as he calls them. First, he doesn't give them a time frame. He never said, follow me for three years, or follow me for a few months and see if you like it and want to continue. He simply said, follow me. No time frame, no limits, just follow me. Second, he doesn't tell them what they'll face. He doesn't tell these four men that they'll go through three years of awesome and unbelievable experiences and then find themselves amid controversy, fighting and the death of their leader. He doesn't tell them what to expect. If he had told them these things, would their response to his call have been as positive and immediate as the one he got? What if he pulled these men aside and said, listen, for three years you and I are going to have a great time. We're going to help people and minister to their needs. And this means that sometime we'll feed a large group of 5,000 men and women and children with a little boy's sardines and five barley loaves. We're going to go to a wedding and I'll have to make the wine. Peter, you're going to walk in water and I'm going to calm the storm, heal the sick, raise the dead. For three years we'll do all sorts of things, but we'll also have a lot of confrontation with the religious leaders. And eventually the Pharisees and Sadducees are going to get tired of the feeling that people aren't trusting them anymore, and they'll plot with the government to kill me. And one of the disciples not yet with us is going to betray me and hand me over to them. They will have a bogus trial and I'll end up crucified. All of you will reject me and pretend you don't know me. But you will be known, and eventually the religious leaders and the government will look out for all of you. And nearly every one of you will die a painful and horrible death. Not unlike the one I'm going to experience. Come and follow me. Would they have done so? If he told them what was going to happen to him and to them, would they have so readily left everything and followed him? But perhaps what Christ did not tell them is not what's important here. It's not what's missing that we're listening to. Instead, we're challenged to listen to what is there. And what we have very simply is a call. To Simon and Andrew, Jesus says, Come, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. He called James and John and Matthew, the tax collector, in a similar way. And our scripture tells us that Jesus walked along the Sea of Galilee and interrupted Simon and Andrew, James and John while they were mending their nets. He said, come follow me. And they didn't say, Lord, not yet. We must finish mending our nets. We've got fish to catch. You've called it an inconvenient time. This is the best time of year for fishing. Didn't you know that? Jesus said, come follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And they responded immediately and left their nets and followed him. Jesus called Matthew the tax collector. Matthew, come follow me. Matthew didn't say, I'll need to wait for a few days while I get my accounts in balance. I have my ledgers to arrange and the Roman authorities to please. Thank you for your invitation, but please come back later. The Bible says he arose and followed him. Why? Why did these men drop everything and follow Jesus? 
I think it's because Jesus invited them to be part of something bigger than they'd ever been a part of before. He offered them a challenge, something worthwhile to devote their life to, a way to make a difference in the world. Come, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. One of my other roles in the Church of Scotland is as a national assessor, so I'm involved in the selection of applicants to different forms of ministry. And whenever I've had an opportunity to listen to someone's story and their journey, to responding to the call of God to become a minister, deacon, reader, fisher of men, and whenever I've heard other ministers reflect on their call, I've always heard these people say it's the joy of accepting the challenge that Christ invites them to be part of something much bigger. The realisation that through the power of God, they have been given the opportunity to make a difference in the world. Yes, there may be sacrifices and difficulties to overcome, but it's worth it. And it's not just ministers, deacons, readers, it's all of us. It's all of us as well. Christ's call to come and follow me and I will make you fishers of men is for all of us today. And it is an invitation. He's not going to force us. It's not a command. You must come before the queen and the king at a certain time. He invites us. And this call is a challenge to change the world, to make it better. Not because we come up with some new social reform or government programme but because we choose to participate with Christ in what he's doing around the world. The call to the disciples was, come, follow you, and I will make you. It wasn't, follow me and make me into what you want, or come, follow me, and I'll do what you say. It was, I will make you. These four men and all of us today are invited to be a part of what Christ is doing here in Glasgow, in Kings Park, in Gifnock, and around the world. Jesus calls everyone to follow him and we all have an important role to play in his plan. The early believers were so loyal to Jesus and his teachings that other people knew for certain they were his followers. There was something distinct about the way they spoke, acted, lived, that showed others they were the followers of Christ. So how will we respond? How do we respond to this call to be a part of a bigger catch? Do I love like he does? Jesus' own words tell us by this, all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Jesus' love was pure and sacrificial. Likewise, I think our love should cost us something. It may be in the form of material goods, but it may also be the sacrifice of extra patience, time, listening, helping, comforting. Mother Teresa said not all of us can do great things, but we can do small things with great love. Is my life lived humbly and in humility as Jesus lived his? Do I forgive like Jesus? Do others see Jesus through me? Following Jesus means following him wherever he leads. He still calls out today, follow me. And when we accept his invitation, we attempt to walk day by day in faith and obedience. We'll make mistakes. Some days will be easier than others. And tough times will test our loyalty to him. But he will, however, help us slowly transform into his likeness by the power of his spirit and our willingness. Our lifelong hope should be that our lives mirror the character of Jesus and show others his love, joy, peace, patience, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Jesus calls all of us to follow him. Following Jesus also includes learning and applying his teachings through the help of the Holy Spirit. While we can never fully comprehend God, his Spirit empowers us 
because we could never do it on our own, and gives us his understanding and insights. It's fully possible to have this kind of intimate relationship with Jesus when we consistently spend time with him. When Jesus said, follow me, it included knowing him and what he expects. And we do that by reading his word and applying it to our own life. We spend time talking and listening to him to get to know him better, to be more like him. So what about you? Will you accept the challenge to come follow me and I will make you fishers of men? I'll finish with two quotes, another one from Mother Teresa who says, I alone cannot change the world, but I can cast a stone across the waters to create many ripples. We can do something small that can make a great difference. And Mary Oliver, an American poet, says, tell me what it is you plan to do with your one wild and precious life. For us, that's following Jesus, learning more about him and becoming more like him. Amen. We come before God now in our prayers for intercession. Let us pray. Merciful God, you know too well that we worry and have fears, that sometimes doubts and apprehensions seem to overwhelm us. Often our faith is little or there is none. Yet you call us to come to you. Your ears are open to our prayers. Hear us now, O Lord. We pray for all who suffer. To all for whom this global pandemic is still a daily nightmare. For the sick. For those who care for the sick for those whose jobs are affected and who worry about the next meal or how to be safe. For those battling with loneliness and isolation, Lord, be their healer, their provider, and their abiding presence. We pray for all who continue to live with injustice, whose lives are filled with violence and abuse, those who face discrimination and are treated unfairly, those who ask how long before there is relief, those who are asked what did you do instead of how can we help. 
Lord, please grant that your spirit will move us to collective actions of love and care. We pray for those in authority as they make tough response decisions concerning the COVID pandemic, as restriction rules relax and political alliances threaten social action and healthcare workers and health systems become overstretched. Lord, be their wisdom, their strength and guide. We pray for your church. Help us to find new ways of being a community where all are truly and honestly welcome. Where our liturgies do not leave out anyone. Where we are relevant to old and new generations. Lord God, make us your disciples indeed. And we pray for ourselves. Give us a heart that trusts you completely. Grant us grace to do what is right, to fight for justice, and to speak up for those who cannot do so for themselves. Give us thankful hearts, hearts that would see you in everyone, and welcome all as we would welcome you, Lord, help us to mirror you. And we pray these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. We conclude our worship this morning with that wonderful rousing hymn, hymn 352, O oh, for a thousand tongues to sing.
The God who called us here is now sending us out into the world to put the words we have heard into action. As we have worshipped together, now let us leave here renewed and refreshed to share the good news with those we meet. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore.